So now that I'm here in the 3D window, let's go through a quick lesson of navigating in 3D. We know with our cursor, we can scroll in and plan. We can scroll in the same way in 3D. I can scroll back to zoom out. I can hold the scroll wheel down and pan in 3D. I can hold down shift as I'm panning and now I can orbit. Now from here, one thing you will see, if I double click on my scroll wheel, it fits everything back into the center of my screen. This is my fit and window tool. I'm going to scroll forward now and I'm going to position myself where I can see my wall. Nothing is selected here in 3D. If I rest on the bottom of the wall, I'll get my Mercedes icon to appear. So my cursor's reading Mercedes, that tells me I'm on the edge of the plane of the wall. And just like in plan, in 3D, I can't be anywhere else on the wall. I have to have a Mercedes. If I hold down the command key on my Mac, control on my windows, I can trim that wall back. If I select this wall by shift clicking and then orbit around where I can see the plane that I want to extend that to and I rest on the bottom of the wall here, I'll rest right here and as I hold down command on my Mac, control on windows, I can extend in 3D just like I did in plan. I'm going to deselect now. I'm going to scroll out just a little bit and I'm going to hit my F2 key on my keyboard to jump back into my plan view. And all the changes that I've made in 3D now reflect back in plan. Now from here, what I'd like for us to do next is I'd like for us to come back in and draw a simple wall out in the middle of this space. You can choose to move wherever you like, but I'm here inside of one of these rectangular shapes that we just created. I'm going to go to a singular geometry method and I'm going to draw a straight wall. I keep this wall short for an exercise that I want to point out to you. On the wall tool, when I rest on the edge of a wall, I have a dark Mercedes and I have a light Mercedes. The dark Mercedes is the reference line side of the wall. The light Mercedes is the non-reference line side of the wall. When walls clean up, the reference lines must touch. This wall, I have a dark Mercedes on the left hand side of my vertical wall and as I rest here, I'll see that it's not the inside face of my wall, but the exterior face of this wall, this top face of this wall that is the reference side of this wall. So from here, what do I want to do? I want to select my wall by shift and click. We select our wall so it's now editable. And if I rest on a dark Mercedes, hold down command on my Mac, control on my windows, I can extend that wall out. And then I want to pan back down here to this side where I have a light Mercedes. That's a non-reference line side of the wall. That's not going to clean up. By holding down command on my Mac, control on my windows, I can click. I'm on the wall tool. I have my wall selected. It extended to the inside face of the wall. And now you'll see as I zoom in, one side cleaned up because my reference lines touch. The other side did not clean up because my reference lines did not touch. If I want to have those walls clean up, I need to shift click that wall so that it's now editable. I'm on the wall tool and by holding down command on my Mac, control on my windows, I click, it extends that out, and as soon as I zoom in or out, it will refresh the screen and it cleans those elements up. I can click once out in space to deselect or hit escape one time. Now, we are using these tools on a number of different commands throughout the entire modeling process within ARCHICAD. Shift click is selecting for us. We're going to select all our elements by using shift click. We're going to command click with elements that we want to trim. Nothing selected. If something selected, we know those walls are going to extend. We also can determine here if I shift click on a wall by shift clicking on that wall. If I do a command click on a plane that's intersecting those, by command clicking now on my Mac, it's going to break those walls and leave the shortest side selected. So it has broken those walls into two different wall segments. So extend and break are the same command once something is selected. It just depends here if I have an element selected 
at what point is it going to extend beyond the plane and here it will now break and always leaves the shortest side selected.